Okay, Ji. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, uh, we were discussing about uh, strategic significance of Indian Ocean region um, and um, what are, is the role of India in this region and uh, how major powers uh, like uh, China and US, they are playing their role um, in uh, power politics of this region. So uh, in the previous class, we talked about, you know, uh, the strategic uh, importance of Indonesia, uh, Indian Ocean. Um, it is the one of the largest land body of uh, you know water you know, on Earth planet, and about eighty percent of the world seaborne trade passes through this region. Uh, major sea routes, um, you know, Middle East and Africa, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and other countries. You know, they connect themselves uh, through this region, and most of the you know uh, oil and gas resources are also lying in this region, like for example Saudi Arabia, Iran. Uh, and many other countries, you know, of this region are rich in oil and gas resources. Then we also talked about the sea lines of communications that 50% uh, of the world's container ship, bulk cargo, uh, at all pass through this region and a huge, you know, maritime trade activity takes place in this region. Um, major, you know, choke points uh, and uh, major, you can say, areas from where the, you know, uh, oil supplies pass through were also discussed in the previous class in which we talked about uh, the importance of Strait of Hormuz, uh, that how the 90% of oil supplies of the Gulf region, uh, you know, pass through this uh, narrow corridor and on which the United States, on the one with the, you know, Chinese and the uh, Japanese and the South Koreans, Taiwanese, and many other countries like Europeans, Indians, they are relying on this oil. So this is a narrow uh, pass between, uh, you know, uh, Iran and Oman in the Persian Gulf region, and this is very important uh, region. And Pakistan is also located closer to it. Then we also talked about other choke points as well, uh, Strait of Malacca and others. Uh, we also talked, discussed the uh, you know major powers uh, you know ingress in this region, and China is very dominant power in this region. China is very dominant in East Asia, Southeast Asia, and of course in the Indian. Uh, ocean or the Asia Pacific region. China is there for two, primarily for two reasons. One is their economic expansion, you can say, uh, through Maritime Belt and Road Initiative. And secondly, they are, you know, protecting their interest, strategic interest and political and economic interest with their, you know, um, huge naval force. Um, and uh, they have deployed their Navy uh, in this region and their Navy is very uh, strong in this region as compared to other countries of this region. So uh, remember that Chinese are employing area uh, anti-access and area denial strategies. And what is these? What are these strategies? These strategies mean that China is you know, acquiring such capabilities uh, that uh, other extra regional powers may not get any chance to maintain their dominance in this region. So basically China is going for outright you know, hegemony in this region. As far as India or Indian Ocean is concerned and the Indian Navy is concerned, China is way ahead of the Indian Navy and they're very powerful in terms of economy, in terms of you know, assets, uh, military capabilities and others. Uh, but, uh, and of course, they are also dominant uh, as far as the you know, US capabilities are concerned. United States of America has deployed only sound fleet in East Asian region, in the Asia Pacific region. But as far as the China is concerned, they are very powerful. They are way ahead of the US capabilities. Uh, in this region. So China is dominant. China also carries out patrolling of this region uh, with their, you know, unmanned uh, underwater vehicles. And uh, these vehicles are used for information gathering and the others. Um, China is, you know, expanding itself and uh, China's vision, as I told you before, uh, is to, you know, connect the whole world with the Chinese homeland. And they are, you know, employing different strategies. They are connecting uh, their, uh, their, their, their economy with the rest of the world through maritime silk route and through land and air, air silk route. So they have, you know, come up with many, many, uh, you can say, uh, maritime routes, for example, and the Indian Ocean region is very important as far as the Chinese maritime silk route is concerned. They are coming up with, they have also secured bases in this region. Many regional ports have been hired for many years, like, for example, Gwadar for 40 years and, you know, many other countries. They have also leased their bases. And Gwadar, I told you in the previous class that Gwadar is the most important port for the Chinese because they are going to cut short their uh, huge distance. Uh, um, they were importing oil from Persian Gulf and it took, you know, uh, more than uh, 10 to 12,000 kilometers 
uh, or you can say nautical miles, it, you know, it, the distance it had to travel, but now they are going to cut short that distance after the establishment of, you know, um, operationalization of HEPAC. So that, that is the reason that it, this region is important. Now let's come to the uh, Indian strategy in this region. The Indians are, you know, obviously they, they have got, you know, 90% of their maritime uh, overall their trade is through sea. So obviously they are going to have, you know, stronger um, military, you know, naval capabilities in the region. Uh, India is a huge economy. As I, I think told you before that India is going to grow 11.5% uh, per uh, annual uh, GDP rate. And uh, obviously they would require more and more economic activity. So that's why this region is important for them because they are going to rely on this region for 90% of their trade with the rest of the world. Uh, the Indians, uh, their, their uh, population is also booming. 1.38 billion population and booming economy would require more and more economic activity. And that's the reason that India is actively involved in the Indian Ocean region. So they have got, uh, you know, they have uh, got some strategic projects with, with, with major powers um, and some of them are independent, some of them are bilateral. For example, Sagar, we discussed about the Sagar project, which, you know, talks about different type of engagements, uh, which we already covered. The most important one is the Quadril, uh, Quad, uh, which is, you know, also considered as the Asian NATO. It is among the United States of America, Japan, Australia, and India. All these four powers, uh, they are, you know, focused on the Asia Pacific and the Indian Ocean region because, uh, you know, other than the United States of America, all these powers are regional powers. And the United States of America is extra regional power, which is which has, you know, established its bases in this region, in the Asia Pacific region, in the Indian Ocean region. And they have forged alliances with the countries like Australia, Japan, South Korea, and of course, uh, India. So uh, both are, you know, um, uh, they are, they are, they are, you know, um, they have got many number of, you know, um, contracts and uh, strategic uh, partnerships, which we'll discuss in the coming slides. Uh, I think we also talked about in Indian Na Ocean Naval Symposium. It's a, a loose alliance in which both, you know, countries from this region, uh, Indian Ocean region, they cooperate with each other. Uh, as far as the piracy is concerned or counterterrorism or these type of activities are concerned. So uh, this is something uh, in which Pakistan is also part of it. So that's not something, uh, you know, against Pakistan or China. But um, these alliances, which we are going to discuss now, they are against, uh, you know, primarily against China and Pakistan in trust. Um, uh, we talked about Lemo, Beka, uh, Comcasa, uh, STA and uh, Industrial Security Annex and, uh, you know, Tiger Triumph exercises and 2 plus 2 dialogues. So all these activities, uh, almost, I think, six activities they are, you know, you know, carrying out with the United States of America. And these activities are against China and Pakistan, of course. Uh, LEMO, we talked about LEMO, it is a logistic exchange memorandum of agreement in which both countries are going to use their logistics, their bases, uh, whenever uh, it is, you know, required. So this is uh, going to improve their overall uh, transport and logistic capabilities, supplies and services, you know, uh, repair or any anything um, which the, uh, you know, both countries, are, you know, they require, so they'll uh, do that. And in this way, they are going to improve their Navy to Navy cooperation. And that is going to give them, you know, a greater outreach in the Indian Ocean region, both countries. Uh, then we also talked about, you know, uh, Com uh, Comcasa, which is Communications Compatibility and Security Agreement. And uh, this is basically encrypted secure line of communication in which the United States of America and Indian policymakers, they can, you know, uh, share information, share, you know, uh, uh, you know, other important things uh, in, a, in a very secure, uh, you know, communication network. So that is something which is, you know, there and both countries are improving uh, day by day. This uh, India and the U.S. intensified under the radar intelligence and military cooperation at an unprecedented level. So Comcasa has improved their secure line of communication. And... Uh, basic exchange beka bhi tha ye bhi humne kar liya tha discuss i think beka bhi ho gaya tha which is again uh, very important uh, it is going to improve the us uh, you know uh, indian uh, you know um, geo special uh, intelligence like for example uh, space satellites and other things so they are going to improve their accuracy and precision of their weapons missiles 
their you know armed drones so this is basically um, uh, again sharing of information on maps and satellite images so which is very important satellite can provide you real time information about the enemy their position their movement so this is something which is going to give india an edge uh, information edge against pakistan so obviously it is going to revamp the indian overall military capabilities against pakistan uh, both uh, countries have also carried out you know triumph tiger triumph exercises and these are you know um, exercises which are uh, being carried out by air force of both countries uh, land forces and of course their navy so basically it's a, a tri service exercise in which uh, of course the indian uh, you know army air force and navy they are going to collaborate with the us and they are going to learn a lot of uh, you know things uh, training with the us uh, army air force and navy because uh, of course the united states of america they are well trained and highly professional forces um, then another important agreement is the sta uh, or you can say strategic trade authorization uh, in a you know very uh, you can say in a nutshell i can uh, as a layman language i will let you know that this particular agreement uh, would allow india to acquire highly sophisticated technology of the united states of america so under this agreement uh, they are going to get you know um, modern aircraft and uh, drones and many other things uh, which were previously not uh, you know india was not authorized to get from the united states of america so india and united states of america their bilateral trade in the previous decade had been more than 15 billion dollars and it is increasing day by day so united states of america is their fourth largest supplier or uh, so this is something which is you know uh, taking a uh, lot of you can say pace and uh, in coming years the indians are going to get advanced helicopters uh, from the united states of america armed drones which may again uh, you know create security dilemma for pakistan india may use these drones for their suspected surgical strikes against pakistan so which is again uh, it would be a very very threatening thing for pakistan because uh it would create serious troubles in the region uh then india under this agreement can also buy modern aircraft like fifth generation aircraft from the united states of america so far um there is no signal but in future it may take place so uh this was uh, all about the indo us strategic alliance and the us uh, you know ingress in the indian ocean region now let's quickly look at the uh, indian naval uh, indian naval forces or indian naval capabilities Uh, which india has deployed in this region and uh, how they are controlling things in this region india um, let me tell you first of all that india has got three commands uh, i think previously i told you before uh, visakhapatnam uh, they have got another one command in visakhapatnam uh, which looks at uh, bay of bengal area then they got cochin another command which looks at the wider indian ocean region and then they got you know uh, another command in mumbai which looks after the in the arabian sea area and which is you know pakistan specific uh, they are coming up with you know another base in uh, between the mumbai and uh, kochi uh, which is garwar and uh, this particular base would be uh, utilized to deploy their one of their nuclear submarine there in this region so this is something uh, this is how the indians are you know controlling this region so india um, has to control a huge area so this is the reason they have got huge naval force in this region uh they are coming up with you know uh, modern capabilities like uh, they are aiming for six nuclear submarines currently they have got one uh, arihant which is there and uh, secondly a kula class which they got from the russians um, um but uh, this particular submarine is equipped with the uh, nuclear missiles like sagarika uh, which has a maximum range of about 3000 kilometers so um uh, this is also called uh, you know submarine launched ballistic missile or ssbm so india uh, is uh, you know uh, aiming to get at least six um, uh, you know nuclear submarines in future uh, i hope you are clear on the conventional and nuclear submarines uh, operations a conventional yes. submarine uh, it is run by you know diesel and uh, it has a a very uh, you can say limited uh, endurance and it has to come up for uh, snorkeling or you know to get a refresh and get more uh, logistics and oil and other things but nuclear submarine its battery is charged with nuclear reactor a miniaturized nuclear reactor is this you know fit in uh, in nuclear submarine so which allows nuclear submarine to submerge under water for months 
uh, it depends on their logistics and supplies, but uh, they don't need to come up like a conventional submarine. So having a nuclear submarine, um, you know, it is an asset which, you know, allow India or any other country in the world to have a second strike, a short second strike capability against the enemy. So this is something uh, which India, you can say, this is the backbone of the Indian Navy. So India is planning for about, you know, six nuclear submarines in future. Other than that, the Indians have also deployed Rukmini space satellite, which is also called GSAT-7. It's called Rukmini Rukmini. Now, Rukmini's uh, lens, hai, it can cover approximately 2,000 nautical mile area in the Indian Ocean region, which provides India, you know, uh, you know, uh, greater access to the, uh, you know, real-time information uh, on a wider scale uh, in, the, on the, in the Indian Ocean region. Achha, Pakistan ke paas is ki capabilities nahi hai. We are only relying on, relying on the PC3 Orions and the AVOX or any other, you know, airborne assets. Uh, limited endurance but uh, spy satellite uh, it can provide you around the clock 24 7 uh, information edge against the enemy uh, so this is something which is there india is also aiming for three aircraft carriers uh, huge uh, this is also called uh, you know elephant of the sea and uh, these aircraft carriers are you know they are utilized for power projection uh, in the modern times uh, why? Because uh, in modern times, India cannot use these uh, assets against Pakistan. Uh, why they cannot use these assets against Pakistan? Let me tell you, they are basically, uh, they are huge uh, and they are slow. Uh, if India want to utilize this uh, capability against Pakistan, obviously, so Pakistan have got the capability to take out uh, these assets. And if these assets are gone, for example, if we have this aircraft carrier, so unka jo janda hai wo niche aa jayega us din theek hai and what are the threats to the indian aircraft carrier whenever you are attempting any question uska apne counter bhi saath mein likhna hota hai theek hai if india is aiming for these type of capabilities like aircraft carriers so what are the counter capabilities for pakistan for example so pakistan have got anti ship missiles jo ke harpoon wagaira humne america se liye hue hain they are quite capable plus we have also got submarine launched torpedoes or हमारे पास अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह वो भी बहुत अच्छी हैं बाबर क्रूज मिसाइल इज देयर बाबर जो है दैट दैट इज एलसी एसएलबीएम सबमरीन लॉन्च बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल सो इट हैज द रेंज ऑफ अबाउट 700 किलोमीटर्स एंड इट कैन आल्सो समर्ज और इट कैन आल्सो डिस्ट्रॉय एन एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर तो ये भी एक थ्रेट है इंडियन सबमरीन के लिए अगर वो हमारी रेंज में आएंगे तो वी विल टेक इट आउट उसके अलावा आपके पास अंडर सी अनमैन व्हीकल्स भी हैं वो भी यूज हो सकते हैं प्रिसीजन गार्डेड मिनिशंस आपके जो जहाज हैं एयरक्राफ्ट हैं उनके अंदर स्टैंड ऑफ कैपेबिलिटी है इफ दे कैन कैरी जैसे अमराम है अमराम इज अ यू नो यू कैन से स्टैंड ऑफ वेपन प्रिसीजन गार्डेड मिनिशन की कैटेगरी में आता है जो कि हमने अमेरिका से लिया हुआ है दैट इज फिट इन इन द एफ16s और इंडिया ने इस पे एलिगेशन भी लगाए थे कि हमने वही वेपन यूज करके इंडिया के जो जहाज थे उनको गिराया था एस एसयू30 को और मिक को सो दीस कैपेबिलिटीज आर देयर इन पाकिस्तान हमारे जीएफ थंडर में भी है एंड एफ16 इज आल्सो इक्विप्ड विद पीजीएमस आर देन यू गॉट मर्वस मर्वस भी है मल्टीपल इंडिपेंडेंट रीएंट्री व्हीकल इट वन रॉकेट कैन कैरी मल्टीपल वॉरहेड्स सो इस तरह से इंडिया का अगर एयर डिफेंस भी लगा हो एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर के ऊपर तो वी कैन फेल दैट so all these capabilities are there and pakistan ka of course uh, ek aur hamare paas hai uh, air launched uh, cruise missile alcm jise kehte hain rad rad is also very capable uh, missile uh, which has a range of about 600 kilometers to usse bhi hum isko uda sakte hain plus hamare paas apne bhi bahut sare ballistic missiles wagaira hain so um, an aircraft carrier against a nuclear weapon state like pakistan um is you know useless so it, it is there but it is only there for the power projection india want to be a global power and they just want to show to the world that yes we have also got such capabilities all right so then they got uh, they are also getting uh, you know um, conventional submarines from you know germany and other powers so these conventional submarines are also you know um, a good capability um, and it is also going to equip the Indian Navy and improve their overall striking capability against Pakistan and other countries. Primarily, uh, conventional submarine ko wo Pakistan ke against he use karenge. So it is a greater threat to Pakistani warships operating in the Indian Ocean region. And of course, it is also a greater threat for Pakistani premium assets like our port hai, ya hamare jo baki assets hai, uh, closer to a maritime domain. 
मैंने आपको पहले बता दिया था कि इंडिया इज एमिंग फॉर सिक्स न्यूक्लियर सबमरीन सो दीज आर सम ऑफ दी दीज आर दी नेम्स ऑफ दो सबमरीन अगर आपको एक बार इसको प्रैक्टिस कर लें तो मेरे हाल से आपको याद हो जाएगा तो अगर आप इसको मैंशन करेंगी तो आपको यू कैन फैच गुड मार्क एंड वट आर दबिलिटीज ऑफ दीज न्यूक्लियर सबमरीन दे कैन कैरी मिजाइल्स लाइक आई सी बी एम्स के सिक्स एस एल बी एम्स ये जो लॉन्ग रेंज मिजाइल मैक्सिमम रेंज का आठ हजार किलोमीटर तक कर लेके जा सकते हैं ये लोग Uh, they can also be equipped with MIRVs, cruise missiles, torpedoes. So all these things are there, and um, they have a you know um, uh, a speed of about 25 knots, which is quite uh, faster. So ये वो सारी चीजें हैं जो कि ये submarines जो हैं उसे equipped होंगे. इसके अलावा they are aiming for destroyers. Destroyer is also a warship which is used for you know quick operations at, uh, on uh, in maritime domain. so they are aiming for the you know four destroyers which are going to likely to join the indian navy in by 2024 uh, 2021 mein pehla aana hai 22 mein dusra teesra 23 mein aur chautha unko 24 mein aayega so in coming four years they are going to equip their navy with these highly sophisticated modern um, destroyers and they, uh, they 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 will they will pose a serious challenge for pakistan iske alawa they are also aiming for frigates which is again a warship and uh, the number of warships are going to be added in next few years especially by 2025 about uh, six or seven uh, new frigates are going to join indian uh, navy these frigates are also quite uh, they are also equipped with modern technologies like barricade uh, air defense system brahmos cruise missiles anti ship torpedoes so um, many other many other capabilities are also uh, added in that ठीक हो गया जी गिव मी अ मिनट ओके अच्छा सो विद दीस कैपेबिलिटीज इंडिया इज गोइंग टू हैव अ ग्रेटर फुटप्रिंट इन द इंडियन ओशन रीजन एंड ऑब्वियसली दे 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 आर यू नो नो डाउट दे आर पोजिंग अ सीरियस चैलेंज टू पाकिस्तानी मैरिटाइम इंटरेस्ट इन द रीजन एंड दीस कैपेबिलिटीज वुड बी डिप्लॉयड ऑल अराउंड इन दिस रीजन other than that the indians are also getting you know pcp at one and now p at one is a serious challenge for pakistani navy and especially for the pakistani submarines surface ships and aircraft for example this particular aircraft is highly highly you can say um, uh, capable and uh, it has the ability to you know uh, carry out surveillance of an area of about 1200 nautical miles and it can detect incoming uh, pakistan's uh, you know aircraft uavs pakistan's vessels on the surface and of course pakistani submarines underwater so uh, it can not only detect these submarines but it can also take out these submarines with you know modern weapons like harpoon block 2 missiles and you know modern uh, lightweight torpedoes and rockets and depth charges so all these capabilities are you know serious threat for pakistan and pakistan navy especially pakistani uh, submarines they are also getting the romeo um, uh, helicopters these are mh, MH, MH 60 multi role romeo helicopters which could be used for rescue missions and which could also be used to you know detect submarines and uh, they you can take out submarines with the help of these you know helicopters so um these are the capabilities some of the capabilities which are you know um, india is acquiring and uh, with these capabilities deployed in the indian ocean region india would have a stronger and you know a, a stronger navy against pakistan pakistan uh, would have to come up with you know alternatives pakistan have to you know uh, collaborate with the countries like china of course and uh, this is the reason that we are collaborating with china um on gwadar port and that's why china is there in the in this region in the arabian sea and we are happy that china is here why because the pakistani navy is a smaller navy as compared to the indian navy uh, which has a size of about 20000 23000 you know a man so it's a smaller navy and uh, it is basically it is also called a coastal navy coastal navy ka matlab ye hai ki they can or pakistani navy can you know secure their own maritime boundaries Uh, जितना भी हमारा 24 नॉटिकल माइल का एरिया है एंड बियॉन्ड दैट वहां पे ये ऑपरेट नहीं कर सक कर, करना चाहते अच्छा तो बियॉन्ड ट्वेंटी फोर नॉटिकल माइल्स वी आर टेकिंग असिस्टेंस एंड हेल्प फ्रॉम द चाइनीज द चाइनीज वेसल्स आर ऑपरेटिंग इन द इन दिस रीजन along with pakistan they are carrying out joint patrolling with pakistan they have also you know they are also establishing their air defense capabilities 
in and around Gwadar port and other areas because Chinese have invested 64 billion dollars. So they would love to, uh, you know, um, protect their uh, project like uh, premium project like Gwadar, of course, which is the jewel of CPAC. So uh, automatically the Chinese are going to deploy their nuclear submarines also. And Pakistan should also collaborate with China to get a nuclear submarine of its own. Uh, but it may take time. Uh, I think the collaboration is there and uh, China would provide Pakistan with a nuclear submarine, maybe on lease, maybe on uh, joint collaboration. So uh, nuclear submarine is also not a major issue. Um, Vice Admiral Mohammed Harun Saab came an interview. Kiya tha. He had an experience of about 18 years uh, of, you know, he was commander of the Pakistani submarine fleet. So he told me that Pakistan, Pakistani sailormen, they are capable of running, uh, you know, uh, submarines like nuclear submarines after training, and we are, you know, quite capable. Uh, all we need is, you know, um, uh, we have to get these submarines once, and automatically, slowly, and gradually, we can not only develop these submarines, but we can also, uh, you know, operate these submarines. So ultimately, uh, for a short second strike capability and to balance the Indian hegemony in this region. Uh, Pakistan would have to acquire all these capabilities so um, uh, so we can equip our uh, Navy to counter the Indian hegemony in the Indian Ocean region and you know beyond. Uh, other than that, uh, this region in future would remain a battleground among different powers. Uh, like for example, the United States of America along with the cronies would uh, operate in this region. Uh, obviously, America is an alliance with uh, Japan, Australia, and of course, India, South Korea. So uh, they will be, you know, uh, you know, operating in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, and obviously, the Chinese are also um, belong to this region, and they would also operate in this region. And Chinese are, you know, largely dependent on the Indian Ocean region for their trade, for their investment, for their oil supplies and other things. And they are, of course, they have got, you know, strategic alliance with Pakistan as well. So um, this competition in the in future would grow and Pakistan can counter this uh, particular uh, competition with the uh, closer uh, strategic collaboration, political and economic collaboration with Chinese and they are doing it. And slowly and gradually, inshallah, Pakistan would be able to counter the Indian threats in this region. Uh, I think this is all um, from my side. Now, if you got any question, you can ask. Otherwise, we will stop here. So, Indian Ocean was very comprehensive. Tha, aapka ye lecture. Iske andar humne, yes. Not only we discussed about the Indian Ocean's importance, but also role of major powers like China, uh, US, and of course, India in this region, and how these countries are collaborating with each other in bilateral relationships. impact Pakistan Or in the end, uh, Indian Navy ki pe jo modernization ho rahi hai, naval modernization, and how it is it is challenging Pakistani maritime and trust. Or isko bhi hum discuss kar liye. So obviously, ye um, a comprehensive topic tha. Or is co up coming shalatala ya poka fi areas may help karega. Current affair ka be a question up a mera health aroga. Pakistan affair may be a sakta kahina ki iska kuna good to put out haka with me fit and curse something. Or other essay ku yajata escoper. Kuka kafi important topic a year. Or IR Medunchla, I'm very much pretty sure ki kahina kahin ya jaga. Asia Pacific ke reference ya sakta, Indian Ocean ke reference ya sakta, Chinese uh, maritime, uh, ya Chinese uh, naval modernization, ya Chinese uh, ingress in the Asia Pacific, uh, ya hegemony, ya.